What's going on everybody man Mike is back with another video back here to talk about iPad OS 17.2 or 17.2 yes it's an update that is a little bit smaller in my opinion for iPads but it still brings some much needed improvements to just the overall use of the iPads we know that many of the updates of course are similar in terms of iOS 17.2 and we're going to highlight some of those features and one thing in particular that this update brought for the iPads that no one's really talking about so make sure you stay tuned to this video to find out what that is but in the meantime if you like videos about the software reviews accessories for anything tech related smartphones tablets and the like make sure you guys ignite that like button hit that like button subscribe to the channel the notification bell so that way you know it's my videos that way we can sit back relax and see what's cracking now let's get into the video and in terms of this this is the ipad pro 12.9 inch from 2022 yes that m2 chip look at that beautiful oh what's this mars it's mars or mercury one of the two but upon jumping inside here using that face id then i hope they move from up here to over here the first thing we're going to do is jump into settings and as you guys see i'm using stage manager one of my all-time favorite features something that definitely proved an ipad os 17 and the first thing we're going to talk about is sensitivity uh content warning and so if, in order to find that you can come in here to privacy and security and right down here sensitive content warning has been improved to give you even more uh detection notices of <laughs> content that you may or may not want to see and so it gives you that warning that has been improved your local awareness in terms of like the area that you live in has also been improved to give you more highlighted information events that take place during you know in your local city or state area and that's in terms of like emergency alerts and whatnot so i thought i'd highlight that as well here real quick if we also want to jump in here to general and jump over here to airdrop nope my bad airplay airplay has also added the airplay receiver on the ipads for vision pro right there now the thing that they did not add is if we actually want to go back here oh, excuse me if we want to go back here and airdrop they did not add the over the internet which is a little interesting but i guess considering this is the wi-fi model maybe if this was the lte connectivity model they would have added it but so far so not it is not on here also what they've added or what they didn't add is in the camera settings so if we go down here to the camera settings a feature for the ipads that was not added or a feature for the iphones rather that was not added to the camera was spatial video so if you look in here you don't see no settings or spatial video and if we come in here to formats again you don't see anything in terms of spatial video very basic in terms of the settings for the cameras on the ipads what else did they add? Well, if we jump back over here into general and we select keyboard, you now have the ability to show predictions in line. You can actually toggle that off. What a helpful feature because it can be annoying seeing that if you don't want to use it. For me, I use both my iPhone and iPad to do a lot of like YouTube studio stuff. And for whatever reason, YouTube studio and iOS does not like to function well together sometimes and it throws off doing a lot of writing in terms of like SEO and my description box and stuff like that. So I just turn that off to, to not have to worry about that on the iPads. You are able to now turn that off. Siri has also been updated to allow for you to ask for health information. I see her listening right there. So if I actually click out of here and then I, let's just do press and hold. How many calories have I burned today? 26. And now, it may seem like I didn't do that. I didn't wear my aura ring today. I literally just got back from playing basketball. <laughs> so I most definitely have burned significant calories today. But as you can see, you're now able to highlight that with Siri. Another big update that has came is with live activities. Yes, you can track live activities with the iPads as well, which really is useful through Apple TV and it now gives you more live real time updates. So let's say you're watching a basketball game, you get more, way more updates in terms of basket scored, fouls, timeouts, turnovers, steals and the like. You get those real time updates now with 17.2.
And you also now have the ability on the iPad as well as your uh, phones to have more customization again over your default alerts sounds. So as you see, we have that here, which is also good to see that they brought to the iPad. Heads. Now let's jump over here to Apple Music because we know that we still got some updates for Apple Music. And so jumping on over here to Apple Music, you now have the ability to con have more control over your library. So you can add f playlist songs and add favorite songs and sync your library. You're not able to toggle those off. And so if you're just listening to stuff that you don't want to sync to your library or you don't want to add your favorite songs to your library, you can now toggle that stuff off. Those are pretty much, oh, and listening history. You can turn your listening history on and off there as well. Now, the rest of the updates is actually within the app. So if we actually look for it here, if we click on it, you'll see here, if I go to my playlists or albums, if you see in playlist down at the bottom, you see I have a favorite songs playlist and my custom playlist that I built. This favorite songs playlist is now available as of 17.2. The other thing that almost came with 17.2 was collaborative playlist but that has now came in 17.3 based off of some beta updates and that's something i will show you when 17.3 is ready and live to go those are pretty much the update that they brought to apple music for the ipads something else apple updated which is really across all their devices is that the the itunes stores closed and so now if you want to access that kind of stuff it will be through the apple tv app or probably the hard box that you can buy at the store that's something to highlight there as well back to the device we have new widgets right here we have a digital clock widget if i can get the lighting right you can kind of see how the seconds ticks around the outer edge of the widget so it is an interactive live widget or live widget i should say and then your weather has a couple new widgets we got this one that gives you the daily forecast as well as your high and low in the city you're in and if we swipe on it uh oh bug i don't know why it does that precipitation so in terms of anything rain related you get this as well pretty pretty nice and if you actually jump into the weather as you guys can see beautiful 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 weather app you have a new moon calendar that gives you basically all the information in terms of the monthly calendar for what the moon should look like over the course of the next several days or weeks within that month. So nice, nice update. If you're into astronomy, if you're into space, you're into the moon, you have that access here within Apple's weather app. I like that touch very, very much. And messages. So if we jump back into set, uh, settings, messages actually added ability to allow contact key verification, which basically allows you to verify the people that you're talking to or texting back and forth. And so as you see, I have my contact key verification on. And by doing so, this now allows my messages to verify who I'm talking to as long as they also have theirs on. Now, this changes a little bit with 17.3. But as of 17.2, as long as each other had, as long as you and the other person has it on, you should have no problems being able to verify through the message app, which I'll show you shortly. But if you wanted to, I believe, send them your verification code, you would click on show verification code and then copy it and then send it to whoever you are talking with. So if we actually jump into messages here, here. Boom, and then we click or uh, just scroll down as we can see there, verify contact. And so by click, uh, cl clicking that, it will verify who you're talking to. If we also want to see what else we have going on in here, we also have the ability to, if you press and hold, you can now add a sticker directly from your settings when you press and hold on a message. So you can react. You're going to add a sticker and you can add a live sticker if you wanted to as well. You have that functionality here now. And the other thing you also have the ability to do is with Memoji, you're now able to change your size. So upon clicking the settings over here and you hit edit, you can actually change your body. So if you scroll and scroll, now you can change your body to be a little bit more realistic to what you look like. So good, good messages, apps that they added uh, from Apple. Now, the other thing you can also do is with FaceTime, it now gives you better 
access to blocked contact warnings, meaning if you have blocked somebody, they try to FaceTime you, you get a warning. So now you have the choice of whether or not you want them to stay blocked and or receive that FaceTime call or not. Nice features being brought from Apple with 17.2. Apple TV also got a nice little refresh look. So upon clicking in here, and if we click this away, this gets bigger up here. And of course, if you look at it in landscape mode, it's even bigger. And of course, you always had the previews, but you just get a way bigger look at whatever trailers you want to see for upcoming content from Apple TV. And you just get a more clean experience with this app. I like it in a way. It kind of reminds it's kind of like a souped up Netflix, in my opinion. But I do like the look of Apple TV and they've been they've been more successful with their content early on than than some of these other streaming platforms. Granted, in, in, with the example of Netflix, they drop a lot of content, but Nef uh, Apple TV Plus has been hitting a whole lot more than I thought they were going to. The next thing that Apple brought is PDF annotation improvements for the iPad specifically. That's like the one feature that Apple brought to the iPads that actually matters for the iPad. And essentially what that does is if you're looking at a PDF, now through software, AI and machine learning, all that fun jazz, it notices the fields that need to be annotated in and or need to be filled out. And you can autofill or manually fill with the Apple Pencil. It highlights and identifies those fields so much easier now. So whenever you have documents you need to sign or fill out, your iPad is going to be able to do that a whole lot easier now with 17.2. And that's pretty much all the features that we're getting from 17.2. It's very subtle. But the main thing that I wanted to highlight that I've noticed since 17.2 is battery life has improved when using stage manager. So if you guys want to see, I'll probably have another video here coming up soon about what's on my iPad. Stage manager has been so much more useful now. So upon looking at that, let's just swipe on over here and go to Google. Having all these apps up over here, it has been so much better in terms of battery experience using Stage Manager with the iPad. Something that I definitely appreciate. And forming windows has been a little bit easier as well. The one thing I, I definitely noticed that could use improvement is like YouTube specifically, because like if you have YouTube bundled in with like two to three other apps, I mean, you have like three or four apps up with YouTube. YouTube will not properly kind of fit in the middle of the screen when you kind of blow it out as much as you can. Because, you know, if I wanted to, I can hide my windows over there by just expanding this, right? But I'm not going to do that. But with YouTube, it won't necessarily do that. And right now, YouTube is in full screen mode for me. So if I minimize, or I think what I can do is if I swipe, yeah. So now I might actually do it now. That's what I like as well with Stage Manager, right? You can hide your taskbar or not hide it. Now, by itself, it fits in the middle. But if I had other apps up, or if I do that, it will just full screen. It will not actually not completely full screen. Okay, it will. But see how it fits more in the middle? I would not be able to hide. See, it's got to go full screen all the way. If you have a couple other apps with this open, it won't full screen all the way. It'll just be kind of offset. So I would like to see them kind of improve that. But the 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 ability to finesse stage manager has been so much more nice and crisp with iPad OS 17 in general, but specifically with iPad OS 17.2, I've noticed battery life improvements for stage manager in particular. I hope that's also something that they can improve overall because this M2 chip is very very capable. I would just like for them to hone in on power efficiency and and, and that's really pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, that's all I can really say. Of course, more power use in general, but more power efficiency, especially when it comes to stage manager. Power use really just comes down to me using DaVinci Resolve on this iPad. That's something I would definitely like to see. But I am I'm loving what Apple more or less is doing as of right now. There, could there be several other features that could be added to the iPad? No doubt. Of course. Could there be other improvements that they could make of course but right now i i mean this is my daily driver in terms of my workflow i don't use anything else other than my iphone i don't have a laptop i don't have an additional tablet 
I have this iPad Pro and it has been doing wonders for me, being able to easily make it through one day, two, if I'm not doing any editing, I can make it through two days. Editing, one, stage manager, one and a half, but for sure, like if I, I kind of keep it more light, I don't do as much gaming on it, which is fun, by the way. I do a lot of Asphalt 9 on here, and I'm going to see how Monopoly Go, you know, <laughs> fares on here. Value Life has been really, really good. Performance has been good. I'm looking forward and hoping that 17.3 brings some more improvements to the iPads in general, but specifically honing on the pro aspect of this iPad, please, if not with 17.3 iPad OS 18 for sure. Let me know down in the comment section below how's your experience with iPads. Are you on iPad OS 17, 17.2? Uh, surprisingly, it did not get iPad OS 7 or it did not get 17.2.1, meaning there must not have been any battery drain issues when it came or when it comes to the iPad. So I guess that's a good thing. Sometimes iPads will miss out on those like real small updates and maybe it'll be bundled in with a bigger update. Maybe it wasn't. A factor that was bothering people when it came to the iPad. And let me know down in the comment section below. How's your experience going? Have you noticed anything since you've updated your iPads? Are there, are there things that you would like to see come with future updates for the iPads? The comment section is open for discussion. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. So that way you know it's my videos. That way we can sit back, see what's cracking. It's your man Micah signing out. And until the next video.